okay good afternoon if agriculture goes wrong nothing else will have a chance to go right myself supriya nayaka hosting this program agriculture is the backbone of indian economy plays the most crucial role in the so uh, social economical sphere of the country about 70% people of india are living in rural area are still depended on agriculture in olden days farmers in india used to depend on clouds for rains but today they are looking towards cloud computing computing the history of agriculture is the story of mankind development and cultivation of process the systematic rising of plant and animals archaeological evidences indicates the existence of indian agriculture since from 9000 bce today is the 62nd episode of creative today's topic is ancient agriculture practices in india and current situations to present this we have dr n narsimha sir with us today before starting the program i like to brief about creative 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 is a group of pe- like minded people who are eager to gain new knowledge cre means creativity active means activeness creative creative thinking keeps us active knowledge square, square is our tagline sharing of knowledge increases our knowledge vision of creative to build constructive thinking in various domain and our focus is on non textual non academic non syllabus concept we are very thankful to all our resource person for accepting our invitation and engaging us with their knowledge creative is a platform to present the, the uh, speakers view discoveries knowledge with interested people every weekend we are organizing online weekend talks on zoom platform and also live streaming through our youtube channel creative gbd i welcome today speaker dr n narsimha sir and all creative volunteers and participants uh, i like to invite associate professor um, miss rajeshwari ma'am to introduce today's speaker over to rajeshwari ma'am A very good afternoon to one and all. I heartily welcome today's speaker, Dr. N. Narsimhaya, former professor and head department of Agril Extension Education University of Agricultural Sciences, USA, Bangalore. Today's talk is on ancient agricultural practices in India and current situations. A brief introduction about this speaker. He has done a education in doctorate in agricultural education. Sir has published a total of sixty-five scientific publications and ten popular articles. Sir also received national award, best paper presentation award in the ISWE uh, National Seminar two thousand eight on appropriate extension strategy for management of rural resources on eighteen to twenty December two thousand seven, organized by UAS. Darwad and I A R I New Delhi. Uh, he has also won international award award from U S D A P L four eighty for best team work when uh, when research assistant during nineteen eighty three to nineteen eighty four. He also won best paper award in the international conference workshop M E O and Block C I C M O H. 14 to 18th October 2008, uh, Akaika Mugla, Turkey. He has also attended many conferences, conferences and participated. Over to Supriya. Thank you, Rajesh Varima. Over to you, sir. Sir, uh, you are muted, sir. thank you uh, both uh, supriya as well as 
Rajeshwari. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so happy to uh, speak today on the topic uh, ancient Indian agriculture and today's agriculture, very briefly. I'm not putting title as such. Title is there, simply simplified version of my thinking. Okay. Uh, shall I start? Am I audible to all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I am I visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear viewers, I'm sorry I'm using dear viewers because you all attending it with good heart, I suppose. Uh, first of all, before starting the topic, agriculture science in ancient India and current situation, whatever I am presenting today, the uh, I acknowledge the Vedic science as well as Vedic scholars whom I approached for this purpose. And they have shared their knowledge and they have shared some of the audio clippings and some of the many Vedic literatures as well. So my job was very frankly putting it, I have only uh, assembled all the beautiful flowers and made it a garland. So this is what I think, because it is not my knowledge, whatever I have taken from them, I acknowledge them my, with pure heart. And I present the topic, agricultural science in ancient India. The uh, next slide, please. Uh, ancient agriculture ancientness we have to take is the question not to uh, ancient means my thinking is it goes to Vedic period Vedic period goes to nearly 10,000 uh, years BC 10,000 BC then Vedic period, post Vedic period, and uh, the very uh, later uh, further post Vedic, uh, the kings, uh, dynasties, and uh, rulers period. So that way, three segments I have done. First segment is Vedic period. Vedic period, when you say uh, it goes to ten thousand years, you should remember. The, what was the thing? The Vedic literature everywhere, they say uh, Anna or the staple food is very much important for human life. So, depend, uh, so it depends on agriculture. But they have never said agriculture as such. They have used the term Krishi. So human life depends on Anna, which comes from agriculture. Here, Anna means not as we think of only rice and rice products. It is any staple food because some people may not use rice. They may use jowar. Some people may use some other uh, uh, grains. We don't know some of the things. Hence, it is anna means staple food always remember and depends on agriculture. Anything depends on agriculture. They have used term as krishi. Krishi, sometimes they also used Krishi is the term, not only for uh, cultivation or land use, but also for some of the hard work, like education, also they have used. You do Krishi in that field, you will gain. Like that many times. In the field of art, they used, uh, he has done Krishi in that field. They used to say like that. So Krishi here, but basically it depends, uh, the word is used for uh, production of staple food through agriculture or cultivation. The entire Vedic literature from sam, uh, Samhitas to Sutras, we can say Samhitas it is Vedic literature and some of the uh, structured things later on is Sutras, which was presumably composed about 10,000 10, years as and uh, extensive mention of these Krishi is uh, found in many of the literatures, books and texts, especially Vedic texts. The Vedic texts like Krishi Parashara, Kautilya's Arthashastra, Manusmriti, 
ವರಾಹಮಿರ ಬೃಹತ್ ಸಂಹಿತ ಅಮರಕೋಶ ಕಾಶ್ಯಪೀಯ ಕೃಷಿ ಸೂಕ್ತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸುರಪಾಲ ವೃಕ್ಷಾಯುರ್ವೇದ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಅಬೋರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಅರ್ಬೋರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಸಾರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಬಯೋಡೈವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ವಿಚ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕೋಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಯೂ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಮೋರ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಬ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಸೇ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ಸ್ ಟು ವೇದಿಕ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಯೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಕೃಷಿ ಇನ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗಿವನ್ ಒನ್ ಕೃಷಿ ಪರಾಶರ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಕವರ್ ಪೇಜ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಡಿಪಿಕ್ಟ್ ಕೃಷಿ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೇಸ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಟು ವೇದಿಕ್ ಋಗ್ವೇದ ವೇದ ಋಗ್ವೇದ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಚೀಫ್ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈವ್ಲಿಹುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಕಾನಮಿ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಸೇ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಕಾನಮಿ ಆರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಭಾರತ ದಿ ಋಗ್ವೇದ ಸೇಸ್ ಭಾರತ ಭರತ ಕಂಡೆ ಭಾರತ ವರ್ಷೆ ವಿ ಸೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಪ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಡ್ ಡನ್ ಅ ಕೆಪ್ಟ್ ಭಾರತ ಬಟ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಭಾರತ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಮೇ ಮಿಸ್ಟೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಕೀಪ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಎನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ವರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಎಕಾನಮಿ ರಾಧರ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ದೇಶ ದೇಶ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಕ ಭಾರತ ದೇಶ ಎಕಾನಮಿ ಅರ್ಥಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದೇಶ ಅರ್ಥ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಸೊ ಸೊ ದಿ ದಿ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಕಾನಮಿ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಲೈವ್ಲಿಹುಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಕಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆಸ್ ರಿಗ್ವೇದ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫೈನೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೇಶನ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಫರ್ಡ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹಾರ್ಮನಿ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ನೇಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ಒನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದಿ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸಫಿಷಿಯನ್ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಎ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ನರೇಷನ್ ಐ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿ ಹಾರ್ಮನಿ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಾರ್ಮನಿ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ದಿ ನೇಚರ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅವೇ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನೇಚರ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಈಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿ ಡಿ ವಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ವಿ ಲಿವ್ ಗುಡ್ ಏರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ನೇಚರ್ ವಿ ಲಿವ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಟೇಕ್ ಗುಡ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ಗುಡ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ನೇಚರ್ ದಿ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವೇರ್ ಅನ್ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ those days and even today we can find some of the natural springs which are unpolluted and simply we go for uh, bisleri water the bisleri water or mineral water is naturally available we have spoiled it rather i will come to it later we have and this is the nature uh, which gives us abundant but because of our greed we have many times uh, polluted it let us not talk about that but my intention here is our textbook says agriculture was considered one of the finest occupation you can imagine how much importance they have given for this because agriculturist uh,
mistake that I have created this picture. These pictures were taken from uh, old texts or Vedic literatures as well. Thank you. Continue. Next. Fourth slide. The beginning of agriculture, how it started with all this, how then agriculture started is the question. About 10,000 years back, according to Markandeya Purana, Brahma himself has, uh, is the inventor of agriculture. Uh, he being Brahma, the creator, the Lord Brahma or the creator, he seeing the ability of support a life, uh, uh, sorry, a self-sufficient life initiated people of all uh, social strata into the profession. I mean, sorry, Brahma was regarded as the first inventor of agriculture because he initiated uh, the self-sufficient initiative of the uh, people uh, through agriculture science. And they have, uh, he also uh, initiated or invented and said agriculture should be in all social strata into this uh, uh, social life of the people. That means people should uh, practice agriculture. That's what Brahma says in Markandeya Purana. This hence Brahma was the first person or Brahma is the first person to invent agriculture as such Krishi or agriculture and he initiated uh, uh, people from different social strata into the agriculture profession. Further, the Atharva Veda says the king Prithuvanya, or sometimes in some text, it is also called, he is also called, referred as Prithu, Prithu, because he is related to uh, land, I think. Prithuvanya, Prithuvanya, Prithu Maharaja is also seen in some of the texts. He is said to be the first person who did farming and grew grains. They never say he did agriculture. He grew grains. That means he has actually cultivated, being a king, cultivated, plowed the land, helped in plowing the land, and helped in cultivation of grains. That's what it says. So Atharva Veda, Markandeya Purana, these are all the uh, Vedic texts where we can find uh, very uh, important reference about start, beginning of agriculture or starting of agriculture uh, uh, about 10,000 years back. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, thank you. Importance of agriculture during the Vedic period. How important it was. Uh, during Vedic period, most of the, the great sages are of the opinion that farming activity should be planned and undertaken in every table land of rural area, in every community, and in every country. This is what the uh, Vedic period sages, great sages like uh, Brah, um, Brahaspati, Guru, uh, then um, uh, uh, Vashishta, uh, Vashishta, Valmiki, and uh, Monu. So many people have explained about uh, farming or rather agriculture. They insisted that every table land means almost plain lands. When you say table land, plain land in rural areas and every community, every in every country, they should practice agriculture. They have insisted on that. Then Kashapiya, um, excuse me, Krishi Parasara has discussed the importance of agriculture and mentioned that by practicing Krishi alone, one is bound to be Bhupati or the landlord here. When you say Bhupati, master of the earth or lord, uh, sorry, landlord, master of the landlord, uh, sorry, master of the land. We refer Bhupati, person who is having Bhumi. Bhumi means land. So, Krishi uh, Parashara has discussed the importance of all these things in that Vedic text, Krishi Parashara Vedic text. Next. Next slide. Okay. The, uh, I think uh, one more slide is uh, behind. Ah, uh, no, thank you. The next sixth slide. Okay, you are right. Uh, Vedic period. 
uh, it continues in the yajurveda vedic period in the yajurveda and the taitriya samhita agriculture is regarded as the means of human welfare uh, it is the source of uh, uh, prosperity and sustenance and give, give sustenance that gives great strength and luster that means for anybody to have strength to have uh, lustrous and to uh, have uh, production capacity one should have good food that's what it says further in explanation all this comes because of the good food and the good food comes from uh, land land hence should be flow nicely and agriculture should be practiced practiced uh, thoroughly and regularly and that's what is human welfare depends it says yajurveda as well as taitariya upanishad uh, krishi uh, further in the kashyapiya uh, krishi sukti uh, it says that production of grain and other food items are the only purposes of highest fulfillment of the land this is quite interesting the kashyapiya krishi sukti says that uh, after all uh, bhumi or land is there it is uh, not for keeping barren always it should be plowed it should be a uh, sown and it crop should be grown plow sow and grow so three words in english are uh, in sanskrit it is a different i don't want to uh, tell that uh, but all of us should remember that kashyapiya krishi sukta how nicely it has mentioned it. that means don't be lazy don't keep any land barren always see that you practice agriculture cultivate crop and feed yourself and your uh, 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 people that's what is the meaning krishi uh, uh, kashyapya uh, krishi sukti says further atharveda gives different types of agriculture implements various classes of uh, bulls horses plow types of uh, sorry plow types etc which can be used to support agriculture see uh, atharva veda it gives such a wonderful uh, classification of bulls which are draft animal especially in uh, our country even today it is there some of the uh, the classical example of bulls are there they are wonderful draft animals we say in agriculture similarly horses also he has uh, in atharveda it has given a classification of bulls also the uh, i i remember uh, the uh, bulls are classified as uh, very high high level draft animals medium level draft animals and uh, animal the bulls which are used for just uh, winnowing uh, rather uh, 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 rather uh, separating the grains from ear head these are all the few things uh, of the different types of agriculture implements classification the sickles Uh, spades then um, uh, things like that uh, different uh, plowing uh, instruments wooden plow iron plow and uh, 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 things like that it has given classification further the rugveda um, directs even the elite class of the society to perform the job of agriculture as it was considered to be equivalent to a yajna so yajna in those days was considered to be highest uh, performance by an individual so when whoever does yajna it, it was considered as highest uh, fulfillment of life but uh, the rigveda says that agriculture is also a yajna you will earn so much of uh, uh, happiness by doing this yajna and uh, you will uh, uh, f- uh, get free food and you will get strength you will get vigor you will get uh, lustrous everything because of the uh, performance of uh, agriculture as a yajna so it directs that 
one should perform agriculture and grow crop regularly on a um, uh, very tabled uh, uh, land and further uh, the it also directs that uh, you never give up agriculture because it is the only fulfillment of the life for anybody you grow crop you continue, you go for agriculture and further you also encourage others to go for agriculture was the meaning given here in the rigveda also the rigveda also mentions about different methods of plowing i just mentioned plowing types all those things plow types plowing types different method of plowing or harrowing intercultivation all those things are wonderfully explained in this uh, uh, rigveda it is amazing that they had such a wonderful knowledge those days vedic period only about 10000 years back so this what is the rigveda atharva veda uh, references apart from kashyapi uh, uh, sorry uh, kashyapi uh, uh, krishi sukti so next let us go to next slide seventh slide this is yet wonderful uh, observation i have made at least i am so much excited to see this in agriculture science when we were studying i think even now we will give in so much of botanical classification scientific names all those things are necessary in no doubt but botanical classification is so much a, a bundle of which cannot be remembered so easily it is so much and so much and so uh, but interestingly shrimad bhagavata in its 10th adhyaya third uh, skanda or unit clearly classifies the entire plant population on the uh, earth into only six classes it is really surprising and amazing uh, the uh, this uh, this not only is a formula which helps for uh, us to remember but for the farmers also depending upon these uh, uh, classification they can think of uh, which season what crop has to be grown and how much to be grown etc etc what a wonderful classification i have given in this uh, uh, i have listed uh, rather in this uh, uh, slide the one uh, first one is vanaspati vanaspati according to sanskrit literature and shrimad bhagavata are those plants which give fruits without flowering here i have given the uh, first um, uh, this is the fig in english we say anjura in kannada and i don't know in other uh, languages and this is one fruit consumable another thing is um, ashwatha or in uh, the we use this uh, particular uh, plant as a uh worshiping tree uh, sorry um, uh, ashwatha var uh, excuse me uh, ananta vriksha or uh, atti atti anta helthivi atti mara uh, atti mara audumbara in sanskrit also it is called audumbara where the same fig type of plant where we don't see the flowers but we we'll, uh, uh, find fruits only if further if you think of very simple example then this i will quote the nobody has seen flower in jackfruit jackfruit plant or tree suddenly we will see one day a small uh, uh, jackfruit emerging out of the a uh, bark of uh, huge uh, jackfruit plant so where we don't find the flower so all these are vanaspati they classified first classification second one is druma druma is the classification where plants which flower and give fruits this is quite visible the example i have given here as mango mango is the best example we can remember druma where we can find the flower bunch of flower or other in florescence uh, these plants and suddenly there will be a small uh, mango setting a peach on the tv a tarad then we will uh, find uh, the growing mango uh, uh, raw mango then 
we will harvest it. Uh, sometimes we don't harvest. Every fruit also we can find on the plant. This is one example. There are so many examples we can find every day. We will see in the nature, druma, plant which flower and give fruits. And it, go, it goes on a cyclic basis. This is the second classification. The third classification is Oshadhaya. Please remember it is pronounced as Oshadhaya, not Aushadhaya. Aushadhaya is different. Oshadhaya. Oshadhaya are those plants that flower and bear fruits once in a lifetime and then die. Here I have listed banana. They flower once, give fruit and their life cycle is over. This is called Oshadhaya. Banana and many more plants, uh, fruits and vegetables are there. They give flower, fruits and or uh, vegetables and they uh, die. Even if you don't harvest, they will go uh, or rather they will die. But they will never forget to give flowers and fruits for uh, human consumption or animal consumption uh, as a nature. Then the four, that is Osha they are called. The late, uh, fourth one is Lata. Name itself says Lata, Late or Balli in Kannada. And I don't know in Tamil and other languages if there are anybody. Sanskrit is Lata. Lata are those plants which require support for survival and um, bear fruits and flowers. I have here listed to uh, remember uh, easily grapes. It's not only grapes, many more plants, cucumbers, most of the cucumbers, then um, many more wild fruits and uh, flowers of Lata. Lata is, needs definitely a support. Uh, otherwise, uh, it may bear fruits and uh, flowers, but it may not be of that quality. But uh, whatever it is, they need a lot of support for their survival and uh, thereby they offer us uh, so many good fruits and flowers and uh, the uh, so many best uh, flower examples i can give uh, is uh, some of the jasmine varieties some of the uh, other flowers uh, they are all latas only uh, jasmine then uh, uh, the uh, some of the uh, uh, okay, I will one more uh, very interesting uh, lata I will give. It is pepper or black pepper, whatever it is, and uh, beetle wine, the beetle leaf. Uh, these are all uh, uh, apart from grapes, we can find leaves, we can find uh, flowers, we can find, and fruits, we can find, and some of them are vegetables also, like cucumbers, variety of cucumbers. These are all lata. Then comes fifth classification, Virut. It is not Virut, it is Virut. Uh, these are all bushy plants of all kinds. Here we find some, many flowering bushy plants which are also ornamental and uh, uh, some other uh, 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 small plants which give fruits also, very uh, small fruits, especially wild varieties of fruits. Uh, uh, this is what I have given uh, the example here uh, for the Virut as Karna Kundala in Kannada. We say many varieties of colorful Karna Kundalas we will find. The, some of the uh, uh, jasmines are also bushy plants, uh, some varieties in that. Uh, apart from that, uh, some of the small wild fruits uh, we find in uh, some of some areas. I don't know. the. Uh, in Canada, some areas we will find Kauli Hannu, Bikke Hannu, Parige Hannu, all those things in Canara Belt or coastal Karnataka. We will find some of these flowers, uh, sorry, fruits, which are consumable, wild fruits, but, but very uh, with very high vitamin uh, uh, and minerals. These are all the fruits one has to eat at least once in a year. Whenever oh, 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 we go, that side of the coastal Karnataka side, will it is available. Then the sixth one is Tvaksara. Tvaksara are plants with hollow stem. It is quite interesting that some of the hollow uh, stem plants are quite useful. For example, uh, I have given here bamboo. 
the common name is bamboo and then uh, uh, the wild canes and the fruit plant is papaya papaya has a hollow stem and uh, we are not supposed to climb on that uh, the papaya plant fruits are quite useful leaves are quite useful nowadays it is also used as medicinal uh, purple uh, plant uh, whereas bamboos are quite uh, useful in construction and many more areas uh, preparing ladders and uh, uh, preparing uh, uh, nice uh, uh, st sticks and uh, all those things so these are all especially wild canes are known for preparation of so many baskets bamboos are also baskets uh, and uh, other uh, walking stick things like that it goes go on list we can list so those these are all twaksara called twaksara imagine all these six only classifications give you uh, anybody who are in this uh, meeting or outside if you give me one plant other than this six classification i will be the happiest person to accept and uh, as a take it as a challenge either plant belong to this vanaspati classification or druma or oshadaya or lata or virut or twaksara only only this classification six classification uh, entire plant population of the earth belongs to what a great thinking of our vedic uh, people and uh, sages they have classified it in shrimad bhagavata it has been classified in um, the uh, 10th chapter of third skanda thank you next uh, slide please eighth slide yes here uh, from sri rudhadraya and chamaka rendering requests lord shiva or ishwara or shankara whoever we call that you please give us rainfall good rainfall and we will do a good krishi so that we off we grow cereals and offer it to navagraha uh, uh, navagrahas nine uh, planets in english ombattu grahagalige kodtevi anta kannadadalli heltare adanrinda avaru santruptaragi namge innashtu hechu krishiyannu kodli olle idan malli anta kelkotare let navagraha dhanya be grown uh, nicely because of the good rainfall and a good krishi we will grow it we will uh, we will offer it to the nine planets of uh, 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 listed pla planets here so that they will be happy the navagrahas will be happy and they are they, they we will get their blessings that's what the uh, rudra in rudra dhyaya chamaka rendering says uh, here uh, i i will uh, uh, request supriya to play the uh, chamaka the particular fourth cha adhyaya fourth anuvaka sorry is that audible sir yeah audible please okay. Supriya, so, yeah, it is not audible, I suppose. No, it is not audible. Sorry, it is not audible. Supriya, so, yeah, please verify it. Okay, before uh, her verification, shall I give explanation, sir? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. <laughs> the nine planets are, uh, as all of you mostly know it, uh, but still I will just quote: Surya, the sun god. Here they say he he is interested. 
to uh, with offering of wheat or yava yava aschame masha aschame like that it comes we will listen to it later then chandra moon is uh, shamaka shamak means shamak in kannada little millet he is uh, he will be very happy to offer the uh, if you we offer it shall i play it in mobile sir yeah if it is available you play it uh, one minute chame chame sunata chame pajashtame rasachame tritam chame madhu chame saktishtame sabhi nishtame trishtame vrishtishtame jaitam chame mahodhityam chame rakishtame rajashtame mushtam chame mushtishtame vibhu chame prabhu chame bahu chame bhujashtame purnam chame purnadalam chame kritishtame kojavashtame nam chame kritishtame priyadashtame javashtame maashashtame tilashtame mutashtame kalvashtame godhuma yes uh, thank you supriya so you have heard uh, the uh, chamaka Uh, rendering i will give explanation then we will go to that uh, chandra moon i was just telling then uh, he is uh, very happy if you offer shamakki or little millet then uh, mangala the mars uh, adaki adaki means tour pigeon p in english tour in uh, also kannada they say tour togari all those things pigeon p then uh, budha budha is mercury then mudga mudga is he is interested in mudga green gram this is very important serial then next one is guru or jupiter uh, he is interested in chanaka chamaka chanaka is bengal gram uh, 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 the next one is shukra or venus he is interested in tandula tandula is rice akki or anna or rice akki then shani or saturn he is interested in tila sesam tila many people uh, sometimes uh, if they are religiously bent upon the <laughs> the uh, what you call uh, the horoscope people they advise them to go for shani temple and offer uh, yellu deepa at least in kannada i know uh, many people go and offer on saturdays in navagraha temples uh, the yellu deepa tila because he is interested uh, seni is interested or saturn uh, planet is very much interested in tila or sesam that's why they advise like that but uh, from vedic period it is there tila yellu is there it is not today's the next one is after shani it is rahu rahu is uh, is interested in masha masha means urad or black gram uddu in kannada they say uh, the next one is ketu after rahu ketu ketu is interested in kulitta kulitta is horse gram or uh, huruli in kannada and other languages i don't know kindly excuse me if somebody is there other than kannada people uh, i hope they are there but whatever it is surya is yava in uh, um, audio you must have seen yava aschame mod godhuma aschame mudga aschame kal like this you have heard it is it was bit fast otherwise it is there all these navagrahas they pray in chamaka adhyaya uh, they uh, pray lord shiva to give us good rainfall so that we will grow all this navagraha dhanyas and offer it to navagrahas so that all these nine planets will be happy and we are blessed that's what it said that that is to show that from vedic period Uh, the grains and the pulses all seeds grains were there that is the proof here uh, the rice staple food comes then grams are there uh, which supports uh, for uh, uh, cooking purpose of uh, different variety of uh, 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 preparations then uh, samyak is there little millet which they use as uh, 
the sweet preparation sweets and uh, yellow is the oil seed they also use in every day's uh, uh, cooking and black gram is needed for good preparation and horse gram is highly proteinaceous so all these things they have uh, thought over those days you can imagine how much importance they have given it for agriculture next slide please i have given few pictures also here next slide here comes the wonderful panini uh, uh, this classification of farmers according to their possession of land and implements the panini uh, wonderfully classified uh, farmers into three ahali suhali and durhali ahali means farmers who do not have their own land at all and they they cannot plow or they cannot cultivate but uh normally these are farmers who are uh, plowing land and i have shown given picture uh, they will be normally agriculture laborers who uh, today we call them all the olden days they were also there they don't have their own land they don't have their own plowing implements etc etc hence they used to be a working class because agriculture as such needs lot of working uh, uh, population so they are all classified as ahali and next one is suhali suhali means farmers who are in possession of good land and they used to plow or cultivate themselves or they used to hire agriculture uh, sorry laborers for agriculture purpose ahalis used to be hired by suhalis the good classification is there whatever it is this is the second classification entire agriculture or farming population third Uh, type of classification panini has done was durhali durhali means farmers who have uh, 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 who have uncultivable land or they never uh, they cannot plow it or cultivate it we call banjar bhumi avri bhumi ide adar banjar bhumi yenu beliyalla andi anta some people unfortunately their land will be uh, so uh, uh, so uncultivable either with lot of pebbles and stones or uh, they don't have water at all and like that they uh, leave it as fallow they will also uh, either uh, grow crops with very difficult uh, situation to themselves neither they can give it to anybody or sometimes they don't cultivate at all so much difficulty will be there they are all durhalis whatever it is see the suhalis are the farmers sorry land owners who have good land they will normally hire ahalis or durhalis also sometimes but durhalis sometimes with their uh, uh, very hard work they will also grow few crops uh, and they keep themselves the uh, self sufficiency okay so these are the three classification according to panini only three types of farmers he says uh, depending upon the land and implements they possess and next uh, slide please oh, this is yet another uh, very good thing bodhayana grahya sutra manages the vanaspati homa even today i have seen some of the people performing vanaspati homa in addition to uh, sankalpa sutra they give a sort of uh, sankalpa sankalpa i don't have exact word in english but uh, uh, they uh, la, rather uh, give a brief introduction or address for the particular god and they perform that particular homa or yajna in sanskrit and they they say the sorry uh, bodhayana grahasya sutra says that the when there is a drought or flood or lightning hits the crop field uh, one if one perform this uh, shanti homa with sankalpa sutra they will get group uh, good crop yield and uh, it will be a very good uh, result uh, of the shanti homa they say so this is this mention uh, this is the mention you can find in bodhayana grahya sutra uh, why i am putting this is not with a religious bent of mind but the alternate for flood and drought and uh, lightning etc when nature is furious 
then one has to do shanti homa that means agriculture is very important they have indirectly said in this bodhayana grasses next one is manusmriti also says that uh, 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 the um, farmer should have good knowledge of seeds the cultivation season good uh, and bad of qualities of this soils or rather different types of soils and they are all should be versed well versed in the measurement of the field and the effect of other natural forces these are this is very important manusmriti it says see how farmer should have knowledge of seeds uh, seasons cultivation season uh, quality of uh, soils all those things are very very important basic requirement for the agriculture they have insisted uh, in manusmriti then the amarakosha described entire uh, uh, lands depending on for that fertility uh, into 12 types only and uh, the irrigation and physical characteristics in its uh, uh, chapter of uh, bhumi varga the bhumi varga chapter explains entire uh, land type into 12 depending upon the uh, fertility and irrigation facilities let us see the bhumi varga next slide bhumi varga classification says urvara that means very fertile soil ushara barren soil maru desert uh, then aprahta fallow land where we cannot cultivate then sadwala shadwala sorry shadwala is a grassy land then pankikala is muddy land then jalapraha is watery land marsh we call then kachcha kachcha is also land contiguous with water uh, then sharkara full of pebbles and limestones then sharkaravati sharkaravati is a sandy soil then 11th one is nadi matruka land uh, watered from a river then deva matruka is rain fed uh, land so interestingly here bhumi varga urvara is a fertile soil and uh, it's uh, fertile means uh, very um, uh, soil type is very uh, very very important for cultivation crop uh, any crop and every crop we can grow in this urvara or fertile soil then ushara is barren land uh, where only few grasses grow or few brushy plants will grow we cannot go it is not a good land they say then uh, maru maru means desert in even in kannada we say marubhumi and marubhumi is there in thar desert english they say desert all those things are there aprahata is fallow land where we cannot grow uh, and sometimes uh, people purposefully extra land they have they will keep it fallow shadwala is grassy land where grasses only grow and panke kala muddy land all those things are there. kachcha is interestingly uh, in gujarat we can find kachcha pradesh kachcha kachcha region where it is full of water nothing can grow except some watery weeds then sharkara is limestone where crops cannot be grown sharkara uti is a sandy soil once again uh, it is some crops we can grow here some other crops we many crops we cannot grow here then nadi matruka is uh, it's a uh, watered uh, or irrigated land from river source and dev matruka is exclusively from rain fed condition so this is the uh, beautiful uh, bhumi varga classification um, Uh, we can find next slide please next slide okay post vedic period comes quite interestingly support in support of agriculture was there uh, the excavation sites like mehargarh now it is in pakistan and lahor dev in uttar pradesh revealed that evidence of agriculture practices uh, was there uh, and it is found nearly 10000 years back similarly in the uh, belan and ganges valley region of northern india tells us that agriculture was there almost 7000 years back some of the excavation sites see here, here uh, this one is uh, um, uh, mahergarh and this one is uh, La- lahor dev and uh, other belan and other things and it is there but um, uh, the proof is that Uh, we uh, they, in the excavation they have found some of the pots with uh, grains 
kept it as a seed or for maybe consumption purpose. Lot of uh, excavation sites, they have found many cereals, pulses, um, all those seeds uh, as, a, um, as a preservation in earthen pots. So that is the thing. And Belan and Ganges region also it is found. Uh, further, uh, during Buddha's period, the Ganasangha of the Shakya Pantha is said to have helped Buddha's father, Shuddhodana, in farming, who was a uh, part of the Shakya oligarchy and owned land, says the reference. That means even the king, uh, Shakya uh, oligarchy king, he used to cultivate land. I have given third picture here. Apart from excavation. This is the, uh, the proof uh, uh, that even the Buddha spirit, post-Vedic, uh, they used to uh, cultivate, they used to uh, do agriculture, and which was, con which was considered as a noble proportion because Buddha's father himself as a king, Shuddhodana, he has uh, cultivated land. That is the uh, post-Vedic period. First proof. Next slide, please. Yeah, then comes uh, the dynasties, kings and rulers period. Here, Megasthenes, the Greek ambassador to India those days, Bharata, he has uh, listed in his writing, Chandragupta Mona's period was very prominent with a uh, lot of evidences about irrigation facilities and benefit for the cultivators he used to give, Chandragupta Mauryas. Uh, there is also evidence that Chandrupta Moira was also responsible for constructing uh, a lake called Sudarshana in Junagadh district of uh, Gujarat. Junagadh, near Junagadh in Gujarat uh, state. This is uh, Sudarshana lake is there still today. So this is a contribution by uh, Chandrupta Moira. So I have in, um, uh, in this uh, side, uh, right side of the slide, I have given how these uh, the post Vedic period or uh, dynasties kings have ruled uh, their uh, ruling given their ruling, excuse me, given uh, importance for agriculture. Mauryas comes the first in uh, with uh, Sudarshana Lake, then comes uh, Kushanas in North India and Satvahanas in Deccan Plateau and uh, uh, Southern India brought unprecedented prosperity through agriculture. They have given so much of importance for uh, agriculture and they have encouraged the agriculture and they are the Kushanas and um, Satavahanas. Uh, next comes the uh, Chalukyas in the south, especially King uh, Harshavardhana and the Pallavas in the south also supported agriculture. The interesting part is next Cholas, uh, the Empire, Chola Empire period, they have given land to the individual uh, individuals as a plot and they used to cultivate it and they used to give irrigation and uh, the, they, uh, the Chola Empire period, they have started uh, appointing bureaucrats to look after the distribution of water, particularly by tank and canal network to the uh, drier areas so that agriculture is uh, um, given importance and uh, they can grow crops and they can feed the entire uh, king uh, kingdom and kings. That's what was the thing. So this is Chola's period. Next slide. After Cholas, it comes the Vijayanagara emperors. The proof, they are all proof of uh, agriculture existence and how much importance they are given for agriculture. The Vijayanagara emperor uh, period in Hampi, even today we can find, I have uh, given here picture, it is a stone structure wherein they used to um, uh, run the water through canal, stone um, ducts. They used to run water for the agriculture field and they used to grow crops and the best crop grown in the field they used to offer it to uh, the uh, kings of Vijayanagara. There is also a reference. The next thing is after Vijayanagara emperor, uh, the Mysore Maharajas, the greatest contribution for it, especially in Karnataka. Other states are also there. I have taken uh, the examples of Karnataka Vijayanagara as well as Mysore uh, because I belong to Karnataka state. I am proud to present this. The Mysore royal family, Maharajas of Mysore, has contributed so much for construction of all of you know, dams, lakes, irrigation structures, 
and they have also given land for starting agriculture college and research station the first agriculture research station and college in hebbar those days was started because of the mysore maharaja's contribution especially maharani kempar anandjamanni has given 300 acres in hebbar those days for karnataka state agriculture research and uh, agriculture college one has to be very thankful to that that's why i have listed uh, mysore maharaj so like this cholas and pallavas have also done many things in uh, especially in uh, tamil nadu uh, cholas have done uh, good lot of encouragement work for agriculture here mysore when you say uh, we remember krs uh, dam i need not uh, repeat it again whatever it is i am so much thankful to mysore maharaja family because i am an agriculture graduate it's only because of their contribution there are thousands and uh, thousands of agriculture graduates like me um, uh, are there today uh, it's only uh, the contribution of mysore maharaja family especially maharani kempanan jammani so next slide please the current situation with all this uh, background vedic period post vedic period uh, and Uh, the uh, dynastic and king spirit we are coming to almost an end uh, current situation uh, we can find no doubt we have a lot of food production compared to olden days but i am uh, very sorry to place this on the record that with lots of chemical oriented inputs leading to environmental and health hazard not only health hazard of uh, uh, land but also health hazards on human beings as a health uh, environmental health is also spoiled because not only because of uh, uh, chemical orient uh, oriented inputs but also because of the indiscriminate use of uh, chemicals also to control pests and diseases and um, uh, 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 human health also while spraying some of the farmers uh, may be uh, their health may be affected uh, they uh, hardly think of that uh, there are so many things like this but whatever it is current situation we can find in the uh, 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 rather greed of getting more and more money uh, to uh, give uh, very uh, good looking uh, uh, fruits and vegetables farmers uh, um, take up uh, chemical oriented uh, or chemicals for spraying chemical oriented fertilizers uh, then uh, um, uh, growth regulators all those things and which leads to both environmental hazards and uh, the uh, land uh, is also deteriorated the fertility when i say land fertility and also it is uh, hazardous to human health as well as especially farmers and uh, the indirectly the consumers because i don't say uh, farmers directly they it is directly affecting their health the spraying uh, types all those things sometimes they don't uh, take due care hence it is there the indirectly when i say it comes to uh, consumers uh, the chemical sprayed will be sometimes residual toxicity will be there and it will be on the Uh, human health uh, the consumers health uh, the current situation is, i think uh, uh, many of you will get an idea what i am i am telling it uh, further uh, the uh, now hence it is uh, the situation wherein we should reorient farming farming and uh, slowly shift towards organic farming it is going on but still we need to uh, reorient uh, for integrated farming to the farmers Then that means not fully on chemical inputs but also slowly reducing it with uh, uh, the organic inputs then water and irrigation specially potential should be judiciously utilized here uh, the i'm sorry to say many places they irrationally use water especially for growing certain crops which they are not supposed to grow but they still grow and they use water 
uh, irrationally and that has to be oriented properly for judices because this is the resource where we cannot create anything we have to depend on nature hence water and uh, irrigation potentials should be uh, judiciously utilized uh, rather i mean directly putting it they are injudiciously utilizing it rather uh, irrationally they are utilizing so it has to be oriented properly then encourage farming with proper price for the farm product because many of them are leaving agriculture which is the saddest part whatever development other things like uh, mobiles or electronic device or any other mechan uh, machines or machineries will not uh, feed us they thought uh, we cannot fulfill our hunger but only because of agriculture and growing um, crops grains we can fill our uh, hung, uh, stomach and this is the only area where in introduction supriya has told like that uh, i also quote that you cannot eat mobile you cannot eat tv you cannot eat laptop or anything but we have to eat grains and food crops so food only as a food crop we have to give importance for agriculture especially we should encourage farming with good price just like uh, today every company uh, fixes price for their product the farmer should also should have a, a say in fixing his own uh, uh, agriculture uh, produce so that he will get good price thereby he will get encouragement many of the uh, graduates are hesitant to go to agriculture they should also move to agriculture slowly that is the only way out for us that is the current situation as i presume i am sorry because of the uh, lack of time i think i have to close here because i already taken 10 minutes extra 3 to 4 was the time given by me no, sorry given for me i hope i have uh, fulfilled the uh, topic and uh, Uh, any questions i uh, request the viewers to ask me i if i am able i will answer it. thank you thank you if any questions you can unmute yourself and ask sir any questions giridhar sir madam can i Yes, sir. Sir, uh, it's an excellent uh, overview of the evolution of agriculture. Generally, this uh, revolution, sir. Sir, Shrinat, sir, unmute yourself. No, I just uh, you have given a nice uh, overview of evolution of agriculture, where the times to till date. But in in between, we have so many revolutions in agriculture. Maybe quick comment. Do you, do we see really that is a revolution or simply it's a manifestation for one short period of time that green revolution, white revolution? But we are producing milk much much higher than those period. We are producing food grains much much more now than the revolutionary period like green revolution. Just a quick comment on you. अनम्यूट मार्क को ले अनम्यूट मार्क को ले सर यस या एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर व्हाट आई फील व्हाट आई फील इज द व्हाट यू कॉल रेनबो रेवोल्यूशन नाउ वी यूज द टर्म बट एट व्हाट कॉस्ट इज द क्वेश्चन no doubt we were in need of uh, food grains those days during green revolution no doubt we were in need of milk uh, in the white revolution no doubt we were in the need of uh, uh, moisture or water in the uh, blue revolution but at what cost is the question to be asked and thought over i hope you you got yes, my sir. point thank you sir thank you sure. giridhar sir Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, it's a very nice uh, presentation. Sir, uh, actually, about uh, our ancient uh, uh, agriculture methods. Sir. Uh, nowadays, our farmers are uh, growing very well. Uh, that means uh, growing crops in new technologies, and also food production is also more. Uh, but uh, so many times uh, they are not getting a good price uh, for the crops, sir. 
uh, what are the solutions will you give for this uh, problem uh, girdar sir it is a very very difficult question <laughs> thousand dollar question i should say no doubt they are uh, growing uh, uh, four times the old and is the crop yes. but once again the question lies at what cost number one number two they are not getting good price it's only because uh, i uh, i limit my uh, comment to this uh, the prices some of them are getting and what happens uh, the looking into the neighboring farmer the other farmer will start growing the same crop in the same season there will be glut in the market we say glut glut in the market hence uh, sometimes uh, the price crashes also no doubt i should uh, agree that they should be given uh, msp minimum uh, supporting price for every crop uh, uh, but it's bit difficult task because government has to do a lot of exercise for that to support especially some of the perishable crops what we call like fruits and vegetables still we have to go for uh, huge uh, storage structures especially cold storage etc no doubt we are we have imp- we are improving and we have improved but still we need but other side of it uh, now we are slowly turning towards organic farming you will see in cities and uh, towns uh, the uh, organic uh, products are available nowadays but still there is no fixed or uh, proper uh, authenticated institution to certify it and it's a very difficult task also i agree with it but still that's why i always uh, put a question at what cost health is very very important they have they are growing so much of things in my own uh, uh, experience i have seen farmers growing grapes in some of the areas i don't mention it is not, uh, it is because it is not their fault they are they have asked me one question sir in canada I hope you will understand sir namm navu namgu dudd bedwa navu badukbarda agli bengaluru jana city jana enaru agli namge enu madakagutte hege how it is andre one line of grapes they don't spray anything no chemicals at all and other uh, areas they will grow uh, sorry sorry they will spray chemicals in such a way that it will look so colorful so fresh and so nice so they will sell it to market only the one line of grapes they use for their consumption that's why they ask me question sir now manushralva namage dudd beku ansalva now valle bele nalli kotre namage valle dudd varutte this is the other side of the uh, growth kotaita nimge so they hope hope you will understand i am not able to put it properly uh, uh, only because Uh, it is such a pathetic situation i have seen in uh, rural side uh, maneg bere belkotare bengaluri kalsak bere hakthare chemicals hakthare actually 15 days uh, 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 chemical spray madide uh, they have to give time of uh, uh, 15 days uh, before harvest they are not supposed to sorry spray any chemicals but and uh, 3 days in advance they will spray chemicals uh, then growth regulators grapes look so nice and so fresh no uh, insects uh, no fungus or something and they will get a good price they say higa venagutte heli actually iga ide tumbane problem aagtade nam snehitru kuda samar jana raitru idare avaru avana naatu gasu belisbeku antakanta athwa ondu naisargikavagi irutakanta kushi madtakanta dagirabodu ಅವ್ರು ಒಂದೇ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಸರಿ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಆದ್ರೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ನಮ್ಗೆ ತಗೊಳಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಎಲ್ಲಾನು ಕೂಡ ತುಂಬಾ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಗ್ರೋ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲಾನು ಕೂಡ ಈಗ ನಮ್ ನಾಟಿ ಹಸು ಬಂದ ತಕ್ಕಂದ್ರೆ ಒನ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಲೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಾಗ ಅದೇ ಬೇರೆ ಸೀಮೆ ಹಸು ಬಂದಾಗ ಅಷ್ಟು ಕೊಟ್ಟಾಗ ಅವರು ಆರ್ಥಿಕವಾಗಿ ಇರೋದನ್ನೇ ನೋಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹೊರತು ಆರೋಗ್ಯಕ್ಕೆ ಸಂಬಂಧಿಸಿದಂತೆ ಯಾರು ಕೂಡ ಚಿಂತೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಬಹಳ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿದೆ ಅಂಶ ಸರ್ ಸರಿಯಾದ ಅದು ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳೋದು ಸರಿಯಾಗೇ ಇದೆ ಬಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ಅವರು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಪಕ್ಕದ ಮನೆಯವರು ಇದೇ ಬೆಳೆ ಬೆರೆದು ಅಂತ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಬೆಳೆ ಸಿಕ್ತು ಅಂತ ತಕ್ಷಣ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಇಡೀ ಊರನ್ನ ಊರೇ ಬೆಳೀತಾರೆ ಅದೇ ಬೆಳೆನ ಅದನ್ನ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಒಂದು ಅವ್ರು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ನಾವು ಬೇರೆ ಬೆಳೆ ಬೆಳಿತಿ ನೋಡೋಣ ಏನಾಗತ್ತ ಒಂದು ನಾಟಿ ಹಸು ಮತ್ತೆ ಸೀಮೆ ಹಸುಗೆ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ತರ
ನಾನು ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಅಂತ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳಿದ್ನಲ್ಲ ಆ ತರ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ನಾಟಿ ಹಸು ಸೀಮೆ ಹಸು ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲೂ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಬ್ರೆಡ್ ಬೇಕಷ್ಟು ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಅವಾಗ ತುಂಬಾ ಅಧಿಕ ಬೆಳೆನು ಬರಲ್ಲ ಅಧಿಕ ಇಳುವರಿನೂ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಡಿಮೆನು ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಒಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ನೋಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಇದನ್ನ ನಾನ್ ರಿಟೈರ್ಡ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಇದ್ದಾಗಲೂ ನಾನು ರೈತರಿಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಕೃಷಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳನ್ನ ಭೇಟಿಯಾಗಿ ವಿಚಾರ ವಿನಿಮಯ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಅವಾಗ ನಿಮಗೆ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಚಿಂತನೆ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಇದರಿಂದ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ತುಂಬಾ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ಬೆಳೆದು ತುಂಬಾ ಬೆಳೆ ಗ್ಲಟ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆಗೋದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಇದು ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಇನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಬೆಳೆ ಬೆಲೆನು ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಅವರು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಯಾವ ಬೆಳೆ ಯಾವಾಗ ಬೆಳಿಬಹುದು ಅವನು ಬೆಳೆದಂತ ಇವಳು ಬೆರಿಬಾರ್ದು ಅವನ್ ಟೊಮೆಟೊ ಸಿಕ್ಬಿಡ್ತು ಅವನಿಗೆ ಟನ್ನಿಗೆ ಐದ್ ಸಾವಿರ ಸಿಕ್ಬಿಡ್ತಂತೆ ಇವನು ಬೆಳೆದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟ ನಾನು ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಷ್ಟೆ ಹಾಗ್ ಮಾಡಬಾರ್ದು ಅವರು ಅದನ್ನ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ನಾವು ಚಿಂತನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಕೆಲವರು ಹಿತ ಹಿತವತ್ ಜನ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಸಾರಿ ಅವರು ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ನೇ ಹರಿ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಕ್ರಾಪ್ ಅವಾಗ ಗ್ಲಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಹಂಗ್ ಮಾಡಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಸಮ್ವೇರ್ ಅಹ್ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಅಂತೀವಿ ನಾವು ತುಂಬಾ ಆಧುನಿಕನೂ ಅಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬಾ ಇದು ಅಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬಾ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ತೀರಾ ಹಳೆ ಹಳೆ ಕಾಲದ ಬೆಳೆ ಅಥವಾ ಹಸುನು ಅಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬಾ ಆಧುನಿಕ ಬೆಳೆ ಅಥವಾ ಹಸುನು ಅಲ್ಲ ಇದ್ರ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಒಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅವರು ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ದಿನ ಕಷ್ಟ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಸರಿ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನನ್ನ ಭಾವನೆ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಬಂತು ತಮ್ಮ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸ ಸರ್ ನನ್ನೊಂದು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಹೇಳಿ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ನಮ್ ರಾಯಚೂರಲ್ಲಿ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇದೆ ವಿಸಿಟ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರ್ತೀನಿ ನಾನು ಕೆಲವು ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ನನಗೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಎವಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರೈಸ್ ಕಲ್ಟಿವೇಶನ್ ಯಾವಾಗ ಇದಾಯ್ತು ಸರ್ ಪ್ರಾಚೀನ ಒಂದು ಕೃಷಿ ಪದ್ಧತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ರೈಸ್ ಕಲ್ಟಿವೇಶನ್ ನಾನು ನಿಮಗೆ ದಿನ ಮತ್ತು ತಾರೀಕನ್ನು ಹೇಳಕ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ರೂ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಇದೆ ನಾ ಹೇಳ ತಂಡುಲ ಅಂತ ಬಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ನವಗ್ರಹದಲ್ಲಿ ತಂಡುಲ ಅತಿಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠವಾದಂತ ಒಂದು ಧಾನ್ಯ ತಂಡುಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ರೈಸ್ ಅಲ್ವಾ ನಾ ಹೇಳದ್ನಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಕೇಳಿಸ್ಕೊಟ್ರ ಇಲ್ವೋ ಅವಾಗ ನಾನು ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಅದು ನವಗ್ರಹದಲ್ಲಿ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ನವಗ್ರಹ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಹೋಗಿ ಸುಪ್ರಿಯ ಅವ್ರೆ ಇಫ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಹೋಗ್ತೀರಾ ಆ ನವಗ್ರಹ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೆ ನೋಡಿ ತಂಡುಲ ಅಂತ ಅದ ಅನ್ನ ಅಥವಾ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅಹ್ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಬೆಳೆಯನ್ನ ಎವಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಆಯ್ತು ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಶುರು ಆಯ್ತು ಇಲ್ಲದಿದ್ರೆ ನವಗ್ರಹಕ್ಕೆ ನೋಡಿ ಅಹ್ ತಂಡುಲ ಶುಕ್ರನಿಗೆ ವೀನಸ್ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ತಂಡುಲ ಯಾಕ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹೇಳಿ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂತು ನೋಡಿ ಅದ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಕ್ಕಿನೂ ಬೆಳೆದ್ರು ಸಾರಿ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಭತ್ತ ಬೆಳೆದ್ರು ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಕಡ್ಲೆ ಬೆಳೆದ್ರು ನೋಡಿ ಚನ್ನ ಅಂತ ಬರ್ತೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಚನ್ನ ಮಸಾಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಚನಕ ಅಂತ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಶಬ್ದದಿಂದ ತೆಗೆದಿದ್ದು ನೋಡಿ ಗ್ರೀನ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತೊಗರಿ ಅಲ್ವಾ ನಿಮ್ ಭಾಷೆಲಿ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತೀರಾ ಉದ್ಗ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಆ ಬೆಳೆನು ಬೆಳೆದ್ರು ಹಾ ಅದು ಬಹಳ ಆರೋಗ್ಯಕ್ಕೆ
ಓಮನ್ ಮೂಲಕ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹಾಗೂ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಆವಾಗಲೇ ಬೆಳೆದ್ರು ರೈಸ್ ಅಥವಾ ಭತ್ತನ ಆಗಿನ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದು ದುರ್ದೈವ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಹೇಳ್ ಹೇಳ ಹೇಳೋಕೆ ನನಗೆ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಬಟ್ ಹೇಳದೆ ಇದ್ರೆ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಕೇಳಲ್ಲ ಹಂಗಾಗಿದೆ ಈಗೆಲ್ಲ ಈ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದ್ಮೇಲೆ ನನಗೆ ಇದು ಅಹ್ ಬಹಳ ನೋವಾಗತ್ತೆ ನಾವ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕಡೆನು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಕೋಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಮಾಡಿ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿಲು ಹಾಗೆ ಯಾವಾಗ ಬೆಳೀತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ವ್ಯಾಗನಿಂಗ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ವರ್ಷ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನಮ್ದನ್ನು ಯಾರು ಹೇಳಲ್ಲ ಇದು ನಮ್ಮ ದುರ್ದೈವ ದೌರ್ಭಾಗ್ಯ ನಮ್ದು ಎಷ್ಟು ಹಳೆ ಕಲ್ಲ ಕಲ್ಪನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಹತ್ತು ವರ್ಷ ಹತ್ತು ಸಾವಿರ ವರ್ಷ ಅಥವಾ ಏಳು ಸಾವಿರ ವರ್ಷನೇ ತಗೊಂಡ್ರು ಅಷ್ಟು ಹಿಂದಿಂದ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರೂಫ್ ಇದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಇವರು ಇವತ್ತಿಗೂ ನಾವು ವೆಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಫಾಲೋ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅವರೇನೋ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬಾಳಿ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅನ್ನಂಗೆ ಆ ದುರ್ದೈವ ಇದು ಇರಿ ದುರ್ದೈವ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಇದು ಉತ್ತರ ಪ್ರದೇಶದ ಇದು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕವೇಶನ್ ನಡೆದಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಉತ್ತರ ಪ್ರದೇಶದ ಕೋಲ್ಡಿವಾ ಎನ್ನುವ ಆ ಪ್ರದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಒಂದು ಪಾಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಸ್ಕ್ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವಾಗ ಹರಪ್ಪನ್ ಪಿರಿಯಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲೂ ನಮಗ್ ಬಾರ್ಲಿ ಗಿರ್ಲಿ ಏನ್ ಸಿಕ್ತಿತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ರೈ ರೈಸ್ ಕಲ್ಟಿವೇಶನ್ ಪ್ರಾರಂಭ ಆದದ್ದು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಆ ಪಿರಿಯಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಈಗ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಪ್ರಾಚೀನ ಅಂದಾಗ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಎವಿಡೆನ್ ಆಂಟಿಕುಟಿ ಕೊಡೋದೆಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಹರಪ್ಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಕೊಡ್ತೀವಿ ನಾವು ಇಂಡಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಆ ಕೋಲ್ಡಿವಾ ಅನ್ನೋ ಪ್ರದೇಶದೊಳ್ಳೆ ಒಂದು ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾಟ್ರಿ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಹಸ್ಕ್ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿತ್ತಂತೆ ಭತ್ತ ಇದು ಸಿಕ್ತದಲ್ಲ ಹೊಟ್ಟು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ರೈಸ್ ಕಲ್ಟಿವೇಶನ್ ಅವಾಗೂನು ಇತ್ತು ಅಂತ ಕೆಲವು ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿದವ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕವೇಶನ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹರಪ್ಪನ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೋಲ್ಡಿವ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಆ ಅತಿ ಪ್ರಾಚೀನವಾದಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಅಹ್ ಇದು ಇದೆ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಬೆಳೆಗೆ ಅಕ್ಕಿಗೆ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಕಲ್ಟಿವೇಶನ್ಗೆ ಕೋಲ್ಡಿವ ಅಂತ ಸರ್ ಅದು ಇವಾಗ ನೆನಪು ಬಂತು ನನಗೆ ಅದ ಪ್ರದೇಶದ ಹಿನ್ನೆಲೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ನಾನು ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡಂಗ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಪದ್ಮಜ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಸರ್ ಸೀತಾ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ಒಂದು ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಇದೆ ಈಸ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಸಸ್ಟೈನೇಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ಅವರೇ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರ ಅವ್ರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ನೀವು ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಿ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಅವ್ರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಸರ್ ಚಾಟ್ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೆ ಓಕೆ ಈಗ ಅವ್ರು ಕೇಳೋ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಸರಿಯಾಗಿದೆ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಕೊಡಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಯಾರು ತೊಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಉತ್ತರ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿ ಉತ್ತರ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದಾ ಇದು ಸೀತಾ ಅವರೆಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ತುಂಬಾ ಜನರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಈ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ನಾನು ಹೋದಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಈ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ನನಗ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಇದು ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಇಂಥ ಇಷ್ಟೊಂದು ದೊಡ್ಡ ದೇಶ ಇಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಜನ ಸಮೂಹಕ್ಕೆ ಊಟ ಹಾಕ್ಬೋದಾ ಅನ್ನೋದೇ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಓ ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ಆ ತಿಳುವಳಿಕೆಯ ಸಣ್ಣ ಮಟ್ಟದ ಜ್ಞಾನದಿಂದ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಆ ಒಂದೇ ಸಾರಿ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಹೋಗ್ಬಾರ್ದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ತೋರಿಸ್ದೆ ಸ್ಲೋ ಪ್ರಸ್ ತುಂಬಾ ನಿಧಾನಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಈಗ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೀವಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಶಿಫ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಪರ್ಯಾಯವಾಗಿ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆಂತ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ಗೊತ್ತಾಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಕೃಷಿ ಸಮಗ್ರ ಕೃಷಿಗೆ ಅಹ್ ಒತ್ತು ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದೀವಿ ಈಗ ಶುರುವಾಗಿದೆ ಅದು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತೀರಾ ರಾಸಾಯನಿಕ ಗೊಬ್ಬರ ಹಾಕಿ ಅದ್ಭುತ ಬೆಳೆ ಬೆಳೆದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟೆ ಅನ್ನೋ ಬದ್ಲಿಗೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ರಾಸಾಯನಿಕ ಗೊಬ್ಬರ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ದಡ್ಡಿ ಗೊಬ್ಬರ ಅಥವಾ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಗೊಬ್ಬರ ಅಥವಾ ಸಗಣಿ ಗೊಬ್ಬರ ಅಥವಾ ಹಸಿ 
ಉಪ್ಪಿಟ್ಟ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ಬಯೋ ಬಯೋಡಿಗ್ರೇಡಬಲ್ ಬಯೋಡಿಗ್ರೇಡಬಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಏನಿರುತ್ತಲೆ ಗಿಡದ ಭಾಗಗಳನ್ನ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಉಳುಮೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ದೈಂಚ ಗ್ಲಿರ್ ಸೀಡಿಯ ಅಥವಾ ಮುಂತಾದ ಬೆಳೆಗಳನ್ನು ಬೆಳೆದು ಅದನ್ನ ಸೊಪ್ಪನ್ನು ಹಾಕ್ಬೇಕು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಒಂದೇ ಸಾರಿ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬಿಡುವ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಸೇರಿಸಿ ಬೆಳೆದ್ರೆ ನಿಧಾನಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವು ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಇಂದ ಅಹ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನಿಸ್ತೆ ಈ ಅದ ಅಷ್ಟು ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟದ ಕೆಲಸ ಏನ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ಒಂದೇ ಸಾರಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬಾರ್ದು ಅಷ್ಟೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಹೇಳಿ ಸರ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಆ ಸರ್ ಈಗ ಹಣ್ಣುಗೆ ತರಕಾರಿಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲಾನು ನೇರವಾಗಿ ಇಂಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಕೊಟ್ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ದೊಡ್ಡ ದೊಡ್ಡದಾಗ ಇವಾಗ ಅದು ಸಿ ದೊಡ್ಡದಾಗ ಬೆಳಿಬೇಕು ಅದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿಬಿಟ್ಟೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರಲ್ವಾ ಸರ್ ಅದು ಅದು ಎಷ್ಟು ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಸರಿ ಸರ್ ಅದು ನಾನು ಆಗ್ಲೇ ಹೇಳಿದೆ ನಾನು ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಒಬ್ಬ ಪ್ರಾಧ್ಯಾಪಕನಾಗಿ ರಿಟೈರ್ಡ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆಗಿ ಈಗ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂದ್ಕೋಬಾರ್ದು ನಾ ಮೊದ್ಲಿಂದಾನು ಇತ್ತು ಅದು ತುಂಬಾ ಬಹಳ ಬಹಳ ಕಷ್ಟ ಅದು ಅದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಹೇಳುವಾಗ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಮೇಲೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಬೀರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾನು ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟದಿಂದ ಈ ಮಾತು ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ಪಂಜಾಬ್ ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸರ್ ಕೇಸ್ಗಳು ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾಕೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಕೆಲವು ರೈತರು ಬಾಯಲೇ ಕೇಳಿದೇನೆ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಅಲ್ಸರ್ ಆರು ಬರ್ಲಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸರ್ ಆರು ಬರ್ಲಿ ನಾ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿ ನಮಗ್ ದುಡ್ಡು ಬೇಡ್ವಾ ನಿಮ್ ತರ ನಮಗೂ ಬೈಕಲ್ ಓಡಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಕಾರಲ್ಲಿ ಓಡಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ಸಲ್ವಾ ನಾವು ಮನುಷ್ಯರಲ್ವಾ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ನೀವು ಅವ್ರ ಎಷ್ಟು ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ ಹಾಕ್ಬೋದು ಹುಳ ಉಪ್ಪಡಿ ಕಾಟ ಇರಬಾರ್ದು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಬೆಳೆ ಕಾಣ್ಬೇಕು ದೊಡ್ಡದಾಗ್ ಬರ್ಬೇಕು ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ತಗೋಬೇಕು ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ಅಂದ ತಕ್ಷಣ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ ಫರ್ಟಿಲೈಸರ್ಸ್ ಬೇಕು ಔಷಧನು ಹೊಡಿಬೇಕು ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ರೆಸಿಡಿಯಲ್ ಟಾಕ್ಸಿಸಿಟಿ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಉಳಿಕೆ ಉಳಿಕೆ ಆಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಹೇಗೆ ಬೆಳೆ ಕಟಾವ್ ಆದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಗಿಡಗಳು ಭೂಮಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುತ್ತೋ ಅದೇ ತರ ಔಷಧದ ಉಳಿಕೆಯನ್ನು ಉಳ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟ ಮನುಷ್ಯನ ಆರೋಗ್ಯ ಮೇಲೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಬೀರುತ್ತೆ ಒಂದೇ ಒಂದು ನಾನು ಒಬ್ಬ ಅದರಲ್ಲೇ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ವರ್ಷ ಪಳಗಿರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಾನು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕ ಬೇಡುವ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಆದಷ್ಟು ಕ್ಯಾಬೇಜು ಕಾಲಿಫ್ಲವರು ಆಲೂಗಡ್ಡೆ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸ್ಬೇಡಿ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸಿ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಹಣ್ಣುಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ದ್ರಾಕ್ಷಿ ಹಣ್ಣು ಒಣಗಿದ್ದಲ್ಲ ಹಸಿ ದ್ರಾಕ್ಷಿ ಹಣ್ಣು ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ಅದು ಮತ್ತು ಸೇಬನ್ನ ಆದಷ್ಟು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಕನಿಷ್ಠ ಪೀಲ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಅಂತೀವಿ ಬಾ ಬಾಳೆ ಹಣ್ಣು ಅಥವಾ ಕಿತ್ಲೆ ಹಣ್ಣು ಮೂಸಂಬೆ ಹಣ್ಣು ಇಂಥದ್ದು ಸುಲದ್ ಬಿಸಾಕು ಅಂತದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಹೊರಗೆ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಒಳದಿ ಹೊಡೆದಂತ ಔಷಧಗಳು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಅದು ಪರವಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅದರಲ್ಲೂ ಹೊಡೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೂ ಔಷಧ ಹೊಡಿತಾರೆ ಆದ್ರೂ ಇರೋದಲ್ಲಿ ಅದು ವಾಸಿ ತರಕಾರಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇದು ವಾಸಿ ಇದನ್ನ ಸತತ್ತ ತಿದ್ಬಾರ್ದು ಸಿಟವರ್ ಆದಂತೂ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಕೇಳ್ಕೊತೀನಿ ಗೋಬಿ ಮಂಚೂರಿ ತಿನ್ನಕ್ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಡಿ ಅದು ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ ಇರೋದು ಒಂದೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಈ ಎಣ್ಣೆನೂ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಆ ಅಂಗಡಿ ಅವನು ಎಷ್ಟು ದಿನದ ಹಾಕ್ತಾನ ಇರ್ತಾನೋ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಇಷ್ಟು ಸಾರಿ ಅದು ಪಾಕ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೋ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತು ದೇವ್ರಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತು ಓಕೆ ಮುಂದಿನ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗೆ ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಟ್ಟೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ನಾನು ಸರ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದೇ ಒಂದು ಇದು ಸರ್ ಈ ತರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಉತ್ಪಾದನೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದಾರಲ್ವಾ ಸರ್ ಆ ಅದನ್ನ ಯಾವ್ದೇ ರೀತಿ ಸರ್ಕಾರದ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದಾಗ್ಲಿ ಯಾರ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದಾಗ್ಲಿ ಅದನ್ನ ನಿಲ್ಸಕ್ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇಲ್ವಾ ಆತರ ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲಾನು ಇದು ಬಹಳ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆನೆ ಇದು ಸರ್ಕಾರ ಎಲ್ಲದನ್ನು ನಿಲ್ಸಕ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರು ಬೆಳೆಯುವವರು 
ಕೃಷಿಗೆ ಸಂಬಂಧಪಟ್ಟ ಅಂಗಡಿಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಅವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ತಂದ್ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಸಾರಿ ಗೊತ್ತೇ ಇರಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ಇದು ಬೇಡದೇ ಇದ್ರು ನೂವಕ್ರ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಕೊಟ್ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ನೂವಕ್ರ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮಿಕ್ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟಿಸೈಡ್ ಫಂಜಿಸೈಡು ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮಿಕ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಹೆಂಗ್ ಇಂಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ ತಗೊಂಡು ದೇವದ ಒಳಗಿರುತ್ತೋ ಆ ಔಷಧ ಗಿಡ ಕೊಡದ್ರೆ ಅದು ದೇ ಗಿಡದ ಒಳಗ್ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಹಣ್ಣಿನ ಒಳಗ್ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ತರಕಾರಿ ಒಳಗ್ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಮುಂದಿನ ತಲೆಮಾರಿಗೂ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ತಾಯಿಯ ಹೃದಯದಿಂದ ಹಾಲಿನಿಂದ ಮುಂದಿನ ಮಗು ಹೋದ ದಾಖಲೆನು ಬೇಕಷ್ಟಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಯಾರ್ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಸರ್ಕಾರ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಗಂಭೀರ ಆಲೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಖಂಡಿತ ಅದನ್ನ ಬ್ಯಾನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಕೆಲವಷ್ಟನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ನಾವು ಕೆಲವು ವರ್ಷದಿಂದ ಮಂಗಳೂರು ಹತ್ರ ಆಗಿದ್ದು ಘಟನೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಬೇಕು ಸರ್ಕಾರ ಕಾರಣ ಏನು ಮಾಡಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ಕಾರ ಅಹ್ ಒಂದ್ರ ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಯೋಚನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಪರ್ಮಿಷನ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಕೊಡಬಾರ್ದು ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ನ ಬ್ಯಾನು ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿದೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಅದನ್ನ ಇಡ್ಲೇಬಾರ್ದು ಹಾಗಿದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಸರ್ಕಾರ ಮೊದಲನೇ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಎರಡನೇದಾಗಿ ರೈತರು ಕೂಡ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಯೋಚನೆ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಯಾರೋ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಟ್ರು ನಾನು ಹೇಳಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಕ್ಷಮಿಸಿ ಹೇಳಲ್ಲ ಕೇಳ್ಬೇಡಿ ಸಡನ್ ಆಗಿ ವೆಕ್ಕದಮ್ ನಿನ್ನೆವರಿಗೆ ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಇವತ್ ಸಡನ್ ಆಗಿ ಅಷ್ಟು ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಎಲ್ಲದು ಬ್ಯಾನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಬಿಸಾಕ್ಬಿಟ್ರು ಮುಟ್ಟ ಹಂಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಮುಟ್ಟಿದ್ರೆ ಕಠಿಣ ಶಿಕ್ಷೆ ಇದು ಅಂತ ಸೊ ಎಕ್ಕದಮ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಏನಾಯ್ತು ನಾ ಅದನ್ನೇ ಹೇಳಿದ್ ಇಷ್ಟೋ ತನಕ ಇಂಟಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ನಿಧಾನ ಗತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅದೇ ಕಾರಣ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆನೆ ಆದ್ರೂ ಒಂದು ಮುಂದಿನ ತಲೆಮಾರಿ ಬರೋ ಹೊತ್ತಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಆಗ್ಬಹುದು ಎಷ್ಟು ವರ್ಷ ನೀವು ಲೆಕ್ಕ ಹಾಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಅಷ್ಟ್ ಹಾಳ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ನಾವು ಜಮೀನ್ನ ಅಷ್ಟ್ ಹಾಳ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ನಾವು ಅಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಇವಾಗ ನಾವು ನನ್ನ ಒಂದು ಜಮೀನಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ರೀತಿ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಶನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಧಾನಗತಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಒಂದು ಎರಡು ವರ್ಷ ಮೂರ್ ವರ್ಷದಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ರೀತಿ ಫುಲ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದಾ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಓದ್ತಾ ಇರೋ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಯಾವ್ದೋ ಒಂದ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಒಂದ್ ಮೂರ್ ವರ್ಷ ಬೇಕಾಗ್ತದೆ ಐದು ವರ್ಷ ಬೇಕಾಗ್ತದೆ ಅಂತ ಒಬ್ರೊಬ್ರು ಆ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಒಂದು ಅನುಭವದ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ನಿಮ್ ಅನಿಸಿಕೆ ಎಷ್ಟಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಕನಿಷ್ಠ ಅದು ಎರಡು ಸೇರಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಬರು ಎರಡು ವರ್ಷ ಒಬ್ಬೊಬ್ರು ಐದು ವರ್ಷ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅದ್ ಎರಡು ಸೇರಿಸಿ ಅಷ್ಟ್ ಸೇರಿಸಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ವರ್ಷ ಸೇರ್ಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಒಂದ್ ಎಂಟು ವರ್ಷ ಅಂತ ಇಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಉತ್ತರ ಅವರೇ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಿದಾರೆ ಎಷ್ಟ್ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಯ್ತಲ್ಲ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಇವತ್ತಂತೂ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಯಾರು ನಮ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಪಾರಿಗಳು ರೈತರಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ಈಗ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕೋಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ಆಪಲ್ ಗೆ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇಟ್ ನನ್ನ ಹತ್ರ ಪ್ರೂಫ್ ಇದೆ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೋಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಚಂದ ಪಾಲಿಶ್ ಏನ್ ರೆಡ್ ಆಪಲ್ ಆಹ ಇತ್ ತಿಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ನಾನು ನಮ್ಮ ಆರೋಗ್ಯವಂತರಾಗಿ ಬಿಡ್ತೇನೆ ಅನ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಆ ಆಪಲ್ ಸಿಪ್ಪೆನ ಹಾಕಿದ್ ಏನಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಕ್ರಾಪ್ ಫಿಜಾಲಜಲ್ ಕಲಿತೀವಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಗಿಡದ ಬೇರೆಗೆ ನೀರ್ ಹೋಗೋದು ತಪ್ಸ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೋಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಸೇರಿ ಅವ್ರ ಗಿಡ ಹಾಳಾಗಿರೋದು ಆದಷ್ಟು ಆಪಲ್ ಸ್ಕಿನ್ ಬೇಡ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಇನ್ನೇನು ಮಾಡಕ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ
ಈ ಮೈಸೂರಿಗೆ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿರ್ತೇನೆ ಸೊ ಹಂಗಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಅದನ್ನ ಫುಲ್ ಫ್ರೆಜ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮಾಡಕ್ ಇನ್ನೂ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ ಒಂದು ತಿಂಗಳ ಮೇಲೆ ನಂತರ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತೀನಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಇದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಷ್ಟ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ನೀವು ಗೂಗಲ್ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆದ್ರೆ ಭೇಟಿ ಆಗಿ ನಾನು ಸಾಹೇಬ್ರು ಭೇಟಿ ಮಾಡಿಸೋಣ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಅಭಿಲಾಷ್ ಸರ್ ನಾವು ವಾಟ್ಸ್ಆಪ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಲಿಂಕ್ ಅನ್ನ ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ಚಾಟ್ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಅಪ್ಡೇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಅಡ್ಮಿನ್ ಗೆ ನೀವು ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಸರ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಇದು ಇವರು ಕೂಡ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ರು ಯಾರು ಹೇಮಾ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಓಕೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಹೇಮಾ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಸಾವಿತ್ರಿ ಅವರು ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾರೆ ಬೇಗ ಬೇಗ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಬೇಗ ಬೇಗ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಹಲೋ ಹಲೋ ಹೇಳಿ ಹಲೋ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಸರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಾ ಹಾ ಸರ್ ನನ್ ವಾಟ್ಸಪ್ ಇದು ಚಾಟ್ ಲಿಂಕ್ ಕಳಿಸಿದೀನಿ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಲಿಂಕ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಿಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೂಮ್ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಬಂದಿಲ್ಲ ಮತ್ತೆ ಕಳಿಸಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಒಂದ್ ನಿಮಿಷ ಒಂದ್ ನಿಮಿಷ ಕಳಿಸ್ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ಕಳಿಸ್ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ಸಾವಿತ್ರಿ ಅವ್ರ ಏನೋ ಕೇಳವ್ರು ಇದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಕಾಣುತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ನೀವು ಕಳಿಸಿದೀನಿ ಅದಕ್ ಜಾಯಿನ್ ಆಗಿ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಅಡ್ಮಿನ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಡ್ತೇನೆ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವೈಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಸರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಸಮಯಕ್ಕೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಇಷ್ಟೊತ್ತು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಏನೋ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಫುಲ್ ಫ್ಲಡ್ಜ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಹಿಂದೇನು ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋದ್ರಿ ಮುಂದೆ ಇವಾಗ ಏನ್ ನಡೀತಿದೆ ಅನ್ನೋದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಮಾಹಿತಿ ಕೊಟ್ರಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿತ್ತು ಸರ್ ನಾನು ಐ ಎಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಫುಲ್ ಟು ಕ್ರಿಯಾಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ಫೀಲ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಿಟ್ಲ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಟು ಕ್ರಿಯಾಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಮೈ ಲಿಟ್ಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀನಾಥ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸುಪ್ರಿಯಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಟೀಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಆಡಿ